Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting butterfly pea flowers. They grow wild here where I live and I happened to come across a bush when I was taking a walk. There's something magical about this flower, especially when they're made into tea and can turn colors when mixed with a form of acid like lemon. So I decided to create my own take on it where I made the colors look a bit more magical. Like usual, let's start by drawing it out first. The flower shapes are a little bit different. The overall shape of these flowers are ovals. I like to start by figuring out the angle in which you want to paint the flowers and you can do this with the help of a line so you can draw the angle according to that guide. Using these ovals as guides now, I'm going to draw in the details. The flowers are divided into two main sections, which is why I like to create a slight curve at the top and the bottom of the line from either side. And then I just outline the oval with wavy lines to depict the frills of the petals. At the top part, I like to create a slight separation where the petals slightly curls upward to surround the smaller petals at the top, which I'm going to draw and paint later by creating wavy lines from either side to form half circles and a couple of smaller petals at the bottom. And then below that, I'm just going to do a random shape where there will be a color separation as I paint later, then finish with some lines to depict the veins. You can try to draw as many of these as you would like to to get used to it in different angles before painting. So I'm just going to draw another one here and we can move on to the next step. Once I'm done with the main flowers, I'm going to add the green parts where the flower grows from and it's somewhat like a cone shape with a couple of tiny leaves on either side and then I connect it to the stem. For added elements, I'm also going to add flower buds. These are so much fun to paint later, they're just long ellipse shapes which I like to add an S shape to follow the spiraling petals which are starting to bloom followed with one cone at the top just like the large flowers. As for the leaves, I think that their main leaves are rounded, but I like to mix the size and you can also mix in different shapes as well. These flowers are vining flowers and they get tangled in all sorts of plants so I think it would be interesting to also mix up the shapes a bit. I also like to add small circles and curly vines for extra elements as well. Next, let's go over the colors. I'm going to be using my Pentel colors for this and I'm going to use Ultramarine, Prussian Blue, Purple, Red Purple, Yellow and Vermilion for the flowers. As for the leaves, I'm going to have a bit of fun by using bright colors. So here I have Emerald Green, Red Purple, Prussian Blue, Yellow and Light Green. Before I begin to paint, I activated the colors on my palette by just wetting them and I also drew out the main placement of the flowers roughly. But apart from that, I left it blank but you could also draw the leaves prior to painting as well. So here I started by loading my brush with clean water and then I'm just going to wet the area of the flower because I'm going to be using a wet on wet technique for the first layer. I make sure that the water is evenly distributed along all the areas and around all of the corners neatly. I take my time to also make sure that the water is a little bit absorbed into the paper and not just sitting on top creating a puddle. Once you're done, you should be able to see that the area is shiny just like this from the water then I'm going to move on to getting my paint ready which I've already activated and I just took a little bit of purple and ultramarine blue to create a very bright royal blue color. I use the medium to thick consistency of the color and I unload the paint on the wet surface and because the surface is already wet, the paint travels really quickly which is why I'm just unloading using the very tip of my brush so I can control the flow better. I'm placing this all around the area and I'm adding more paint in areas where the blue is becoming lighter after it distributes. Once I become a bit more confident with placing the blue, I also moved some of the paint towards the middle but I left the very center empty because I want to add a yellow color. 
For the yellow, I added a touch of vermilion so the yellow looks a little bit warmer and richer and I'm just going to place it the same way as I did with the blue on the center taking advantage of the still wet surface. This is where I start to interpret the colors myself. I took a little bit of red purple and I just unload it and let it blend with the blue in some parts of the petals just to have a bit of variation in color. Here I'm going to make a dark blue mix by adding in Prussian blue with the previous blue mix from the ultramarine blue and purple and I'm going to use this on the outer part of the petals so there's a bit more gradation to the petals. And I'm just going to repeat those steps in the other flower as well as I wait for the first one to completely dry out which will take quite a while since the paper is quite wet. When spreading the paint, if the paint travels too far like this one where I want to separate the blue from the yellow, you can just use tissue bunched together and use the tip to absorb the paint while it's still wet on the paper. Now that the second flower is done, I'm going to go back to the first flower which is now mostly dry and I'm going to use a medium consistency of the dark blue color to add a little bit of detail with the flower petals. I just add thin lines all around and also creating a little bit of shadow at the top where the flower curls slightly. I make sure to make a longer and cleaner line along the middle to separate the two petals as well. The lines that I create around the flowers are slightly curved to give it a bit more form to the petals and depending on whether you create inwards or outward curves, it will determine the slight curl of the petal and the direction it's facing. Then once I'm done, I created the wavy half circle at the top center of the flower and I just used the same dark mixture in a medium to thick consistency and while I wait for that to dry, I'm going to do the same on the second flower as well. For those thin lines, I'm just going to use the same brush that I've been using since it's fairly new and it still has a nice tip, but it's still much easier to use a smaller one if you have that available. Next I'm going to be adding the details on the yellow part of the flower. I'm going to use yellow with a little bit of light green and I'm going to use this to paint under the tiny petals to create a little bit of shadow under the small petals and also to connect the line from the blue part of the petal at the center. Then I'm also going to add the circle outside of the wavy small petals to indicate a little bit of shadow behind those small petals as well. Using the same green, I'm going to add some lines from the middle outwards to also add a bit of texture on the center of the petals. Then from here, I'm just going to adjust some of the colors to add darker details for increased contrast and better definition. Next I'm going to move on to the flower bud. I'm going to use basically the same color starting with the blue. This has a little bit of Prussian blue in the mix but I try to not use too much so it looks a bit more vibrant. I'm placing the blue at the tip of the petals then I'm going to clean my brush and drag some of the colors outwards to create a light gradient below the darker blue and while the paint is still wet I took some of the red purple in a very very thin consistency to continue the color. 
this might look a little bit off so you don't have to put as much pink if you don't want to then to finish off I'm going to add some of the yellow mixed with a little bit of vermilion at the end of the flower bud Moving on to the leaves, I'm just going to first show you how I mix my colors. So I'm just going to place those colors that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Here I have emerald green and I'm going to place some Prussian blue next to it and some red purple in the middle along with yellow and light green at the bottom. So with these colors, I'm just going to mix the yellow and light green together as well as the Prussian blue and emerald green together mixed with some of the red purple and leave out the colors like this on the palette so you can still adjust the colors and pick up more dominant hues if you wish to. Then here I'm just going to paint the leaves all around the flowers. I first started with the cone at the top of each flower so I can indicate the main stem and then I added more branching out to frame the flowers. Notice how I take different greens as I'm painting the cones. This is to add interest and variety to the painting so it doesn't look too flat. I first started with more of the bluish green and yellow greens next to each other but I'm going to continue later with the more fun colors for the leaves. So this is the part where I picked less natural colors to make the colors look a little bit more magical or mystical as I mentioned at the beginning. And I do this by adding more of the pinks and purples, but if you would like to pick more of a natural color, you can skip the red purple altogether or adjust the amount that you would like to include in your painting. Along with the purples, I also like to create more of neutral grayish tones so I don't overuse the bright colors. But this is up to your individual taste in the end, whether you would like to make or include more bright colors or mix it with muted subtle tones. This is what I generally do when I'm color mixing. I like to mix the colors but also leave out some of the individual colors on the palette as well so I have easy access to adjust the colors or pick from any of them to take or mix with the other color mixtures. It's a bit confusing but it's important to know the role of each color and what it does to the mixture but I think that this is also a good opportunity for you to get acquainted with the colors so you can just have a little bit of fun with the color mixing to see the different hues you can create from simple colors. The colors that I'm mixing here might just have subtle changes but it still changes the tone slightly and you can see from the leaves that I just painted they're similar in tone but because of the slight change the leaves might look a little bit more vibrant well I'd like to think so anyway but I'm just going to continue painting the vines and leaves by changing up the size and angles as well then I'll get back to you when we're ready to move on to the next step So I think that I'm fairly happy with the amount of leaves that I have here but I do think that the value look all too similar so I'm going to add lighter tones of the same colors 
just to add a little bit of depth to the painting. I don't want this to look realistic, but I don't want it to look overly flat either. So I just added water to the paint and I'm just going to paint them lightly in areas which are still a little bit empty and try to balance out the whole painting. I'm just keeping the painting at the top part of this page, but if you wish to, depending on your composition, you can also fill up the whole page if you're having fun with painting the leaves and mixing the colors. For the very last detail, I want to use a dark valley to add to the round plants to add a little bit of depth and I'm going to place the darker tones behind the existing plants. I tried to get the same hue with the darker tone but you can also play around with different hues if you would like to. I also like to then add the darker tones to parts of the stem to define some of the finer lines. And that's pretty much it. This is the finished painting. I hope you guys enjoyed my interpretation of these butterfly pea flowers and feel free to adjust the colors to suit your preference. Like usual, all of the tools and social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you guys learned something new and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!